All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews, and today we are talking about Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Just got back from seeing it at the local IMAX theater. Thought about seeing it in 3D because I heard uh, uh, if you're going to go see 3D, this is the movie to do it in. So highly recommend. Uh, if you uh, listen to Brad Jones's review of this, uh, he says that the 3D is well worth it for this movie. So I might go see this again at a 3D screening instead of the IMAX, but the IMAX was just as good. Great big spectacle. Uh, so there won't be too many spoilers in this review. We're going to talk mostly non-spoilery, but we'll, there's a few things and we'll get to it and I'll let you know when we're going to hit spoilers. So if you like what we're doing here on the channel, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber, please become a subscriber to the channel. Uh, if you're a returning subscriber again, as always, welcome back. How you doing? Let's talk about Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. So, uh, I really dug it. I really dug this movie. Um, it wasn't perfect. Not many things are. Uh, but I really enjoyed seeing this corner of the Marvel Universe. I really enjoyed seeing a new character. Uh, not to me. But from the comics, you know, a new character we have not seen before in the MCU, put on screen. Again, like the Guardians of the Galaxy, not a lot of people knew them, not a lot of people know Shang-Chi. I admittedly don't own a lot of Shang-Chi books. I might only own a couple. And I think that that's because they tie in with other things. But it doesn't mean I don't like the character. Um, and I just got to say, like, there is a lot to really like in this movie. Um, and say what you will about the Marvel formula. Guess what? They make pretty good movies. And, and, and despite the the issues going on with Black Widow, right? we know that they're there. We, they know, we know that they exist. And we know that uh, there's some val validity to the situation that's going on there against Disney and how they did handle that. You know, But that shouldn't taint this movie. And even though COVID and is still making people hesitant to go to the theaters, and it would, and it should, you know, it should make people a little more leery of going to your local theater. But, you know, the local theater experience to me was already on the downward trend. Uh, the things keeping the theaters alive were Marvel movies and Star Wars movies and big spectacle movies. The art house movies, you know, art house movies were not driving in the bucks to the big, you know, movie plexes. It's these movies, the billion dollar movies. Is this a billion dollar movie? I don't know. I, you know, I think that uh, this is a good movie to come out if they hope to make a modest return, you know, in their investment to this. Uh, I happen to really, really dig it, though. Uh, this movie directed by uh, Dustin Daniel Cretton uh, just came out Friday. And I got to say, like I said... I really dug it. Uh, I dug uh, the visuals, of course. Like, you can say this about most Marvel movies. Not all. I thought the visuals in Black Panther were terrible. I didn't like all the visuals in Black Widow. Um, but the visuals in this were stunning. The acting in this was really good. We get some pretty good veteran actors in here and some newcomers and some that have been here a little while uh, that I didn't always like kind of turned my opinion around on him in this movie uh simu lu simu lu as shang shang chun shang chi ah they, there's an issue in the movie about how to pronounce his name shang chi uh i really liked he is not what i pictured from the comics but what i like about that is then he gives it gives you that that actor a chance to turn it around for you and your head you know, from your head how you see things to how you actually see them and he did he succeeded in that it, it's not as like uh an about face i took when i saw heath ledger as the joker where i was like when i first heard heath ledger was going to be the joker i was like no no thanks and then saw it and was like whoa this isn't that but it's a way better than i thought and the guy has got charm uh, but also, like, a, hum a humility to the character. He's not some braggart. He's just a guy. I really like it. He's just kind of matter-of-fact 
just does what he has to do and he's not too you know he's no bravo bravo he's not this like guy with a lot of like a puffed up chest he's just a guy trying to do the right things and i really dug that he portrayed this character really well another surprising performance for me is aquafina as katie i'm not always been the biggest fan of all of her work I really think she's great in Nora from Queens. I thought that was hilarious. I thought she was great in that. But I, that's, that's been more of the exception and not the rule. And this, I was a little leery at first, but she won me over pretty quickly. There were a few jokes that just don't land, but it's okay. Not every joke's going to land. If it does, you're, you're looking at a genius script. Um, she really won me over. I was thinking that she was going to be a little too much for me, uh, a little too shoehorned in. And there is a moment near the end that I was kind of like, okay, I know where this is going. Fine. Um, Tony Lung uh, as Mandarin, even though it's not really the Mandarin. I mean, it's the Mandarin that, like, technically, you know, but he's... Uh, not him. He's, uh, you got, uh, Michelle Yeoh as Jing Nan, who, you know, veteran of, like, movies like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And, uh, Benedict Wong returns in this as Wong. And we'll talk about that. Uh, we also got Meng Er Zhang as Zai Ying. Zai, Zai Ling. Um, kind of a small cast, actually. And what I like is nobody's going to be talking about whitewashing in this movie. All right? They did, you know, it, it would be almost impossible to do any of the casting outside of casting Asian Americans or just Asian actors. Um, so what is Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings without spoiling it? Well, we have this boy who's born of uh, a father who is very powerful known as, you know, in, uh, in the MCU proper as, like, the Mandarin, the leader of the Ten Rings. And you have his mother, who is more of a... Uh, spiritual, kind of, comes from things like... Uh, like, he's all about power, and she's more about communing with the, the you know, nature and, and more peaceful approach to things. And... We snap to the present where he is forced to return to this life uh, when he finds out that his sister's life is in danger and brings Aquafina's Katie along for the ride to stop his father from doing some pretty terrible stuff. And along the way, you know, they meet all sorts of interesting characters. And I just, it didn't feel too long. I, you know, I I enjoyed all the visuals. There were some surprises along the way. The again, the third act is fantastic. Lots of just visually cool stuff. Um, again, not every joke in this movie lands. There are some cliches. There are some tropes, but in, it's in you know there are cliches and tropes in everything. And it's whether or not those things outweigh the good, and they come nowhere near outweighing it. I had a blast with this movie. Uh, I didn't always like the musical choices, but that's more of a personal taste. Um, I really liked the story of that this is like a, about a family. And before, you know, and I can just see how some people are going to be like, oh, the bad guy's the dad, the bad guy's the man again. I mean, they're just going to switch out white man for just man in general. Um but it's more depth. There's more depth to it than that. You know, you, we're talking about a family uh, that come from two kinds of power. There's a darker power and a lighter power, and how the kids have both sides of this inside them. You know, both sides of their parents it lives within them, and, and that fight to pick a side inside you of like the light or the darkness, and and even the parents have both sides in them. They are capable of having both light and dark inside them, and which one wins over in the end, you know? And I like that the father is not just, you know, he's he comes from this, like, 
he's like a thousand years old. He's lived 10 lifetimes and he's been obsessed with power. And contrast that with the mother who, you know, like I said, it comes with this more spiritual, peaceful side of things, a protector role, one that's, you know, trying to live in harmony with things. And how they fall in love and then things happen along the way and then you get our, your conflict of the film where the father is trying to get a task that is seems noble, you know, and, and, and well, maybe not noble is the right word, but makes sense for the character to want to do for his family for you know he he loves his wife and he want he loves his he, his kids but he, it's how he approaches things you know he's been a, a conqueror but he's also been a father he's also been at peace and this character's in conflict with that and it takes you know his children to try to battle him and also try to reach him and along the way you get some great action sequences the bus scene in the beat near the beginning of the film that you see in some of the pictures and trailers reminded me the first thing i thought of was bob odenkirk's nobody even though it's like you know amped up to like a hundred but there's some really great action sequences and like i said some really big surprises and so I highly recommend Shang-Chi and the, the Legend of the Ten Rings. I, I'm trying not to talk that much about it before we hit a few spoilers here. So if you have the chance and you want to see something interesting and different and, and full of color, there was somebody who said this movie was soulless. And you're, you know what? You have no soul, whoever said that, because this movie is dripping with soul. Dripping with life, dripping with all certain... I don't want to keep using that metaphor, but, like, it's just really, really good. And I, it's not one of the... It's, you know, like, sometimes you need to think on it, and then you start to t pick things apart and stuff. But it just really was a fun world that I can't wait to revisit. There are two post credit sequences in this, if you need to know. And uh, we are then going to... Uh, hit spoilers so for anybody who hasn't seen the movie and doesn't want spoilers stop here come back afterwards because we got a few things that we got to talk about so again like subscribe to all of you who have to click off hit the bell for all notifications da, 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 da. so spoilers from here on out you've been warned okay we're and we're not blowing we're not going to tell you all the things but there's some stuff we got to talk about now so first off wong shows up right and abomination from incredible hulk that was played by Tim Roth. Okay, that's very brief. Very brief. But it was so brief that I wanted, I was like, what is happening? Like, I heard about Abomination. So he's fighting in this, like, like an underground fight arena for money. Abomination gets beaten by himself, by Wong. Wong, Wong makes Abomination lose to himself. And all I kept thinking was, great, Abomination's here. Means he's not in custody. Means he's loose. And he's a monster. But he seems to be a more... He's not a mindless monster. He's fighting for money. But why is Wong fighting in this arena? And why, at the end of the scene, is he taking Abomination with him through the portal back to... I don't know where... Now, I could see Wong getting into fights at the arena to make a little extra cash. You know, they, they don't seem to have a lot of money down over on uh, where they live. You know, they always like seem to be scratching to put two, two nickels together. So if he wants to make a few extra bucks fighting a few guys, I get it. But why is he with Abomination? Why is he giving him, like, fighting tips? I really want to know. And I'm not like going, why is Wong doing this? Why is he a bad guy? No, no. I just, I'm really, really curious what happened after that scene. Is that going to, you know, come up later? And that's the thing. One of the things about this movie is there's a lot of little things that, you know, finally get paid off, finally get explained, but then answer more, you know, ask more questions that I hope later on 
uh, will pay off somewhere down the line in the MCU. And and that's one of the great things about the MCU is we do get these kind of payoffs. And a movie like this, when they start to do these things, it's fun. Because one of the biggest things in the MCU back in the day with Iron Man 3, and we've seen it, you know, we saw the, the Ten Ring Army in the first Iron Man movie and everything like that was, when were we going to get the Mandarin? And by Iron Man 3, when we supposedly have the Mandarin, but it's just... You know, Aldrich Killian, played by Guy Pierce, using that as a mascot for their terrorist. You know, uh, you know, what is it? What what is it? A, a terrorist movement? I don't know. His group of terrorists, and having Ben Kingsley be the face of it. As we know, Ben Kingsley is not the Mar uh, Mandarin. He's just a guy named Trevor, and and hail to the king. A guy comes to where Trevor is in jail. And they're going to kill him, and you find out that there's a real Mandarin out there, a real leader of the Ten Rings, and they take Trevor to parts on to end his life. And then we never hear anything again until this movie. And when you hear the Ten Rings and you know a character along the lines of the Mandarin are gonna, is going to be in it, you wonder if they're going to get to it, and they do. And we find out, and I saw him from behind, and I went, it's going to be Ben Kingsley. And it was Ben Kingsley's Trevor in the compound where uh, Tony Lung's character uh, is located at. And he's now been relegated to basically the guy's court jester who just puts on performances for his men, kind of like entertainment. And Trevor becomes kind of a side character in this movie. And it's really, really nice to just see this character back. And in a, he's more accepting of like his role and things. He's still the same guy. They give him a, a bird, a puffball bird. Like, I don't know. It has no face. And it was just really nice seeing this character. It was really nice seeing what happened with it, uh, with his character, finally tying that loose end up from all the way back with Iron Man 3, which is the movie that came out after The Avengers. Iron Man 3 is now, like, what, 2013? Something like that? That's a long freaking time ago. And we're just now getting it paid off. And so it was nice seeing Ben Kingsley back. It was nice seeing all that tied together. And then we have our post credit scenes where Wong shows up at the end of the movie to take Shang-Chi and Katie with him to discuss what's been going on. And when we get the, the first post credit scene, there's Bruce Banner and Captain Marvel and Wong discussing the origins of the Ten Rings. Now, the first thing you, I wanted to say was, why is, where's Professor Hulk? What happened? Why is Bruce Banner in a sling? Like, what happened? Am I forgetting something? Am I, seriously, am I forgetting some detail? I've seen Endgame, like, a bunch of times. He, he was Professor Hulk still at the end of the movie, right? Like, so what's going on? What happened there? You know, I'm less concerned about the Brie Larson, you know, standing next to him, but I don't care. I was like, oh, good, it's Brie Larson as Captain Marvel, and, and I don't care what anybody says. I like Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. I do. I do. And she goes off to do her own thing. But they're talking about the Ten Rings and how it's sending out a signal to who, to what. Don't know. Big questions. I don't even... I don't even know how to speculate because... The Ten Rings in this were a bit, if we were going to nitpick, the Ten Rings were a bit of a nitpick for me because they used to just be actual rings. Now they're like these arm bands, these arm ringlets. And he only seemed to use them in the one way. They, uh, they were like forces of nature, these rings. And when Shang-Chi gets them, he uses them slightly differently, right? But it's just they go from blue to gold and... We really didn't get to see the full potential of these rings. And, you know, yeah, they mess a bit with, you know, they mess around with uh, some of this stuff. And it's fine. I don't hold on to this stuff that tight. Not always. Not especially stuff like this. But it, it was a bit of a nitpick. But what are they, who are they calling? 
There was a there was a theme. It almost seems like a theme then because the voices that were calling, you know, uh, Shang's father to mother from the you know and open up this gate to another realm that wants to just eat a, a bunch of soul suckers, you know. Uh, it, those were calling the dad. So what are the rings co- trying to contact now? These things are way older than the, than when uh, his dad got them. We don't really know anything about them or their origins, just that they're way older than perceived. And I don't know. I don't know. And I, I love this because I... I could just start saying things. I could just start saying random things I think it is, but I or could be, but it could be anything. It could literally be anything. And maybe there's somebody out there that knows a lot, a lot more about this. And so I suggest you, if you want those answers and you think they're out there, you seek them out yourself because I'm fine with not knowing. I'm fine with just having it revealed to me over time. So again, those were the things. And, and then at the very, very end, we find out that Xi Ling, uh, his sister, is starting up the Ten Rings again of her own. Or is she? Is it the Ten Ring? I mean, she's got the banner behind her. She's got training people again. It looks like some more like more technology involved. Uh, she could just be starting up her fighting arena again. Is she a bad guy? I don't know. I think she's more like doing something on her own, striking out on her own. Uh, also, that actress was really good. I really like the dynamic between the brother and the sister in this. Um... I really liked everybody in this, seriously. Everybody was really, really good. Um, And yeah, so that's Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I've already talked about it for 21 minutes. So if you like this sort of review, yeah, I feel like it's a review. I tried to stay non-spoiler until now. If you liked it, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell for all notifications. If you hated it. Well, you can look right here and get a new memory. So those of you who did like it, look away, put on shades. And if you have a slight sensitivity, get it the hell away from here as we give these people who hated this a better memory. And here's hopefully something that will satisfy you more than what I just said. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.